Hey here once again. Thanks again for sharing my videos. Thanks again for being a part of this journey of me starting the life and spiritual coaching sessions. Today we're going to talk about how to let go of the past. You know, because again, I said uh, yesterday that with the pandemic, with it getting darker early, you know, there are so many things that affect us emotionally. And oftentimes what starts to creep up is our past memories of our past. If not memories, people always reminding us of our past. Have you ever felt like that? So today we're going to talk about how to really let go of the past. How do you deal with it? And, um, you know, I want you to really take some notes because I'm going to give you some information and it's going to be really quick. So make sure you take some notes or go back and play it and play it again so you can hear what I'm saying. So how do you let go of the past? Um, all of us, let me start off by saying this, all of us have a past, even the perfect people, even the people who think they haven't done anything wrong. Every one of us on the planet has a past. So let me clear that up um, because you'll run across people and you'll think that they've never done anything wrong. Again, all of us have a past. And for some of us, depending on what we've gone through and the emotional uh, damage that we've endured, sometimes it's pretty hard to get through it. Years can go by and you're still struggling with certain things. So let's get some pointers and some tips today. All right. So number one, the first thing I want to share with you is that even though you have a past that you may not be happy about, you have a past that uh, keeps creeping up because people are talking about it or there's always a reminder. I want you to start creating a mantra for yourself. A mantra is just simply saying, you know, I make up your own mantra in my in my home on every in every room, either on the door or the table. I have a mantra and it's, it's my own mantra. You sparkle and you shine. You are great when you enter the room, um, you know, all different kinds of things that I have. And so what is it that you can say to yourself every single day? just as a reminder, or you can put in your rooms as you walk into the room, um, you know, something that's there that just makes you feel great. And it's something that either you made up or maybe you can find one online, but I like to, you know, make my own up and put them up because only you know what you've gone through, correct? Only you know about that. And sometimes, uh, for example, um, I was married, I went through a divorce, and at the time, my son was 12 years old and it was a struggle. And when I tell you I struggled, I cried, I prayed, I worked like a dog, I did everything. And some days I just thought I wasn't gonna make it. But now that I'm older and my son is an adult, do you know that there are still times when I'm thinking to myself, I'm beating myself up because I'm saying, wow, I wish I had done that better. Or I wish I had done this for him. I wish I had done that. He's doing great, he's moved on. But the guilt still continues to 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 um, to rob me of the greatness that I see in him. And so what I do now and what I've been doing over the past few years is I look at him and I'm like, girl, you did that. High five. You did that. Look at him now, you know, and I'm always encouraging myself. So what can you do? Number one, to lift you up, to turn that around when you think about the, the things that you've done, because a lot of these things that we've done in our past, we, we can't take it back. We can only do better. So what can you do to just, just boost yourself like a cheerleader and just say, you know what? You did that. All right. We moved on. All right. Number two, this is a hard one, but it's something that we have to do. Remember we talked about boundaries. Sometimes there are going to be people in your lives who are constantly going to remind you over and over and over again, either directly or indirectly of your past, what you could have done, what you should have done, who you used to be. They're never going to see you for who you are. And when it gets to a point where it starts to affect you, where, where it's starting to affect you emotionally, what you need to do is start setting 
boundaries. Setting boundaries may look like this. You may have to love them from a distance. It's not that you hate them. It's not that you're angry with them. But right now, they just don't fit into your space. And whenever they enter into your space, they're making you feel uncomfortable, upset, nervous, anxious. You feel yourself falling back into that depressive state. And so sometimes you have to set boundaries and create physical distance. And I know it's hard, but I promise you, as you begin to do that, and in the process of doing that, you're not just setting boundaries and putting them off to the side. You're setting boundaries, putting them off to the side, and you're working on yourself because maybe one day you'll be able to be with them again. Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to see that's something that you learn as you grow and you begin to understand what you can tolerate and what you cannot tolerate. So make sure that you create physical distance, set those boundaries. Don't be afraid to do it. And then, as I said, this goes along with setting the boundaries. Then it's time for you to get to work because you can't just sit back and say, you know what, I'm not dealing with them anymore. I'm just gonna move on. Okay, great. So while you're doing that, make sure that you're getting therapy, counseling, you're working out, you're eating properly, you're getting your proper fluids. Make sure that you're doing everything that you need to do to work on you because this journey, this dealing with the past is not about them and it's not for them. This journey is for you. This is about your healing. So as much as you put them in time out, you still have to deal with yourself and your own issues. This is about you growing and being able to move on to the next level in life. All right, let's go to the next one. Now, again, a lot of us, we've done some crazy stuff in our past. We have some things we might not want to talk about. You know, stuff might have happened. Stuff might have went down. But here's the thing. Guess what? It happened. We can't change it. Nothing we can really do about it. But accept it and know that we're doing better now. We learn from it. You know, we escape some things. We've moved on. So be kind to yourself. Be be okay with telling yourself, you know what? Yep, I did do that. That was a bad idea. That was a terrible idea. But I'm not that person anymore. I am totally different. Again, go back into your mantras. I am great. I am wonderful. I am uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, go back into speaking life over your life. Okay. Then allow yourself to cry. It's okay to cry. It's okay to allow yourself to feel the pain of what it felt like when you were going through certain situations, okay? And then one day, you'll really get to the point where you don't even cry about it anymore. But you have to allow yourself to empty out so you can be filled up with all of the greatness and goodness, as I always tell you, that's waiting for you. Now, you can't put greatness and goodness in there with negativity, anger, pain, being pissed off and all of that. You have to empty all of that out of your vessel. And then after you've emptied all of it out, you're allowing your vessel to receive all of the goodness, the greatness, everything that can be poured into you. Maybe not from the people that you expect it to come from, but there will be other places. There will be other things that will be happening and it will all be poured into and upon your spirit. But you have to allow yourself to empty out, allow yourself to feel. It's okay. That's the only way of getting through it. That's the only way. All right. Next, I want you to understand that there are going to be people in your life, even as you're growing, even as you're, you're maturing, even as you're advancing, even as you're soaring, there are going to be people in your life who still who will still choose to see you as you used to be, as you were. They won't see you for who you are now. And you know what? You have to get to a point where you're okay with that. 
You have to get to a point where you're okay with people not apologizing for their bad behavior and their bad thoughts about you or what they may say about you. You have to get to a point where you're okay with people not being excited about your journey, your new life, your new walk, your new relationship, the changes you've made. You have to be okay and you have to understand that some people were in your life for a season and a reason. Their season is up and you have to leave them where they are. You have to understand that some people were a part of the plan for you to get to where you are now. So don't go back and try to pull them back in. They were a part of the plan because some people will bless you when they think you're hurt, they're hurting you and they're actually blessing you and pushing you into your purpose and into the next level. So you have to be okay with people who used to be in your life. And all of a sudden you look and they're not there anymore. They're not supporters. They're negative. And you thought that they were with you on this journey and now you realize they're not. And you have to be okay with that. Be okay with the people who put you down, talk about you and never apologize. You may not ever get that apology. Be okay with it. Because now you are walking into your purpose and your plan and you are no longer that person from the past. You're new. You're brand new. Walk in it. Wear it well. All right. Next, make sure I say this all the time. Self-care is super, super important. Now, I can't sit here and talk to you all every day and talk to all of the countless people who call me and do all of the things that I'm doing and I don't take care of myself. I have to take care of myself first and allow myself to empty out on those bad days in order to be able to sit here and talk to you and be at peace, be happy, be able to smile, feel free. And I want you to do the same thing. Make sure you're doing something wonderful for yourself. As I said a few minutes ago, when I have those those thoughts that kind of come in my mind about you should have done this and you, you know, you should have done that. Then I turn around and I say, girl, you did that. And I give myself a high five. I might go buy an outfit. I might take myself out to lunch. I do something for me. I might get a massage. What are you going to do for yourself? Because you have to reward yourself, you have to encourage yourself, and you have to understand that no matter what you've done, because as I said, we all have a past, you're not there anymore. You're not that person. You've moved on. There are going to be some people who are still going to be standing in your past, and you have to let them stand there. And you continue to move on, give yourself a high five, and indulge in self-care. Now, let's see what we got next. We got a few more. Oh man, this is a really, really good one. And I know sometimes I sound like a broken record, but surround yourself with people who support you, who uplift you, who love you, who encourage you, who clap for you. And at the same time, if they see you falling to the right or to the left, they're there to give you a nudge, to help you to stand up and also say, you know what? Get it together. Now, you know giving you that side eye and all of that. But those are the people who love you. Keep those people in your life and make sure you surround them. Those are the real people, okay? Um, Give yourself permission to tell your part of the story. You know, a lot of people are walking around hurting and in pain because they're afraid to talk about their story because, you know, um, in in certain uh, eras, you know, my era growing up, it was, you don't talk about stuff. You hold everything in. You you take it to the grave. And even in our parents' era, you definitely don't talk about stuff. You don't get on social media, you know. But be okay with telling your part of the story. Telling your part of the story is therapeutic. Not only is it therapeutic, it will help you um, to, to move on and to move away from all of that. Because, again, you've emptied out. You've said it. You're done with it. And then 
Not only that is it helping you, but it's blessing somebody else because some people think they're the only ones that's going through certain things until they hear your story. So you don't have to get it on social media and blast it to everybody. You might want to write a book. You might want to put it in a journal until you're ready to talk about it, but get it out, whether you're writing, talking about it, talking in your phone, making a song, however you want to tell your part of the story. It's okay for you to do that. Again, give yourself permission to do that. Allow yourself to tell your part of the story. It's okay. It's all right. All right. And then last but not least, I want you to forgive yourself. Okay. We have to forgive ourselves, not just for some of the things, but for all of the things that we've done in our past that we may not be happy about, that still haunts us, that still bothers us. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. And even if other people are saying, you know, I'm not going to forgive you because you did this or you did that, it's okay. You forgive yourself. Love yourself. Be proud of yourself. Be okay with who you are. Understand what you've done. Understand that, that you're not there anymore. You, you've moved on to a new house. You're in, an, in a new journey. You're in a new space. So love yourself enough to stand where you are and say, this is me. This is me. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't change it. I did it, but I'm a new person and I'm making strides and I'm making all the changes that I can. And as you're doing all of this, make sure that you're getting the help that you need. Mental health is very, very um, um, uh, a thing that's going on right now that a lot of people are dealing with mental health issues. And it's on the rise. More and more and more people are dealing with mental health issues. So it's important that you talk to your physician. Your physician can help you to better understand who you need to see for your uh, situation. Okay. And you can get a life coach. Life coaching is life coaches are great people to have because they help you to get out of their stuck, those stuck places. They listen to you. They help you to formulate a plan for your life so you can continue to move forward and enjoy your life. That's why we're called life coaches. You can enjoy your life. So again, this was a little longer today, but I think it was important and I hope you got something from it. Please make sure that you share this video, empower and inspire somebody else. And don't forget that your past is your past. You no longer live there. And if other people want to stand in your past, leave all of your baggage with them, allow them to hold it and go through it, and you continue to move on. Be good, be great, and be blessed. My name is Dr. Lady J, and I am a life and spiritual coach. I have my papers to prove it. And we're going to continue on this journey of growth, health, and healing. Make sure you join me tomorrow for another session. Have a great day and be blessed.